Welcome to another edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. I'm Bob Papa. The New York Giants have qualified for the postseason with their win against Indianapolis. we got a big show lined up for you heading into week 18. Carl Banks will go to the coach's tape with strategy. We've got above the numbers, over under, and a whole lot more coming up on the program. But to get things started, I welcome in my co-host, two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks and the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. And first and foremost, Coach, congratulations on the win against the Colts and locking up that playoff spot, not leaving it for chance in Week 18. Yeah, no, we're very grateful for the opportunity to keep playing. Uh, I thought the fan base was outstanding and uh, you know, look forward to this last game against Philadelphia. Coach, you know the challenge of going in uh, with the earned distraction of a playoff berth being at stake and you were steadfast, hey, we're going to prepare the way we always prepare for the opponent, not for what happens after the opponent. And I think uh, when we look at this game, the players did show that focus. They came out ready to play from the opening kickoff. They really did. I thought this was probably our most complete team win. Uh, I think the offense complemented the defense, the defense complemented the special teams, uh, played for 60 minutes, didn't worry about the score, and really focused on the things we needed to do this week to win the game. And if we do that, you know, then other things take care of themselves, which they did. Coach, you got a defensive touchdown, second defensive touchdown of the season, and Landon talked about film study and tendencies and so on and so forth. That kind of broke the game open. Did, did you guys get a sense at that point in time, okay, you know, a little bit of a deep breath here and now we can kind of go? Yeah, well, anytime you can, you can get one of those touchdowns from either the special teams unit or the defense, that always gives you a big boost. And uh, that play that LC made certainly did. And, you know, we were able to get another field goal there, and um, it was definitely a, a energy booster. Obviously, you know, your team played in all different facets of the game. I want to talk about Daniel Jones' performance. And, and Carl and I, we talked about this. You know, on the touchdown pass that he threw um, when he was kind of scrambling, it's like he gathered himself, and he didn't rush it. Sure. Uh, is that part of the growth that you've seen in him? As a player? Yeah, no, I think he's really improved in a lot of areas, um, you know, with his legs, when to take off, how to reset in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield. Um, and I think he's made a lot of loose plays with his legs this year, and I think he's improved uh, making it with his arm when he is on the move. Um, you know, he can make every throw, and, you know, it's not just him, it's the receiver's got to be in the right spot. And, you know, Richie did a great job of, of really scrambling, seeing him scramble and bursting, coming back to the ball and creating a spot for him to throw it. And he did a good job of keeping his eyes open, not panicking, playing under control, and, and making a good decision. In those last three uh, parts that you talked about, under control, not panicking, and making a good decision, that's not easy sometimes for quarterbacks because I, I was talking to Bob, we were on the air, I'm like, sometimes quarterback will just throw a hand grenade out there and hope, you know, something good happens where, where there's a real opportunity if you can, you know, gather yourself and make a good decision with the football on the run. Absolutely, and you got guys like you, you know, chasing you. Um, I think that's easy to have those three things happen to you. But um, again, I think it all plays together. We work hard on our scramble rules. We have an athletic mobile quarterback and uh, the guys we have to become available for him. And he has to make the right decision, particularly, I would say, down in the red zone. And, you know, I think we've been playing good football down in the red zone. Um, and a big reason why is because of the quarterback. You got Xavier McKinney back, which was a little bit of a surprise to all of us on the outside that he was able to go. Um, was in position on the deep ball, didn't make a play on the ball, but then later in the game seemed to make a play on the ball. How good was it to get him out there and get some reps? Yeah, it's always it's good to have your really good players out there. and. Um, you know, we really didn't make that decision until Friday's practice when, you know, I'm standing outside here talking to Ronnie Barnes and the, the doctors and, uh, you know, said, hey, he, he's really good to go. So we, we talked to him at, during stretch and uh, put him in a little bit. And I think, you know, he hasn't played for a while, so he's getting his feet underneath him, but certainly good to have him back out there. Because of your experience as a coach and been a lot around a lot of wins and a lot of postseason games, both professionally and on the collegiate level, Kind of your message to the team is, right, we've clinched this, but the job is just really beginning now. Yeah, you know, there, there's the regular season. And, and, you know, you always say there's, there's training camp. When you talk to the young players, there's training camp, and that's pretty amped up. But when you get into your first preseason game, you see the speed and everything move up. And then once you go from the preseason to regular season, the speed amps up. And there's a different level of speed, and um, 
you know, from the regular season to the postseason. So uh, what we need to do is finish strong and, you know, have a good week here um, for Philadelphia and then, you know, get out there and get ready for the postseason after that. All right, we'll talk about that a little bit more on the program. When we come back, though, sights and sounds of the Giants win against the Indianapolis Colts here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. On Sunday, the Giants punched their ticket to the postseason with a win against the Indianapolis Colts. Here are sights and sounds of the Giants and Colts. All right, here we go, boys. Take advantage of the opportunity today, all right? Leave it all out there. Play for the guy next to you. Giants on three. One, two, three, Giants. Right. Hey, man, I want to talk about energy, but today has to be about attitude. It has to be about swagger. Right. Let's do it together, man, yeah. and dominate these. Full 60 minutes. Let's go. We have opportunity right here. Let's seize this. Hey, it's another opportunity. You win and you win. Let's go do it. Go chains off. Time to go eat, right? Time to go eat. All we need is right here, right? Everything looks right in front of us. Let's go play. One win at a time for 60 minutes. All we need is all you got. All we need is all you got. Empty the f***ing tank and we punch our ticket. Let's go get it. 50 degrees. On the 1st of January in Jersey, it's meant to be. Hey, bring it in. Look, look close. Look close. Look close. Look close. Hey, bro, we done built this from the ground up, man. Let's go make that count today. We only get one opportunity. Let's make that count today. If you don't feel that today, you push. Just go. Let's go. Let's do it right here. That's on me. That's on three. One, two, three. So it'll be second and three from the 41. Jones over center, Bellinger in motion, Belly's back to the right, Barkley the tailback, handoff to Barkley left, picks his way left, breaks to the outside to the 30, to the 25-yard line, and knocked down at the 22-yard line. Jones out of a shotgun set, takes the snap, back to throw, has time, releases to his right, looking for somebody to uncover, throws it to the end zone, touchdown Giants! Richie James got himself open. Jones bought time. It's a six-yard touchdown pass on a third and goal at the six, and the Giants have the lead. Boy, good job by Daniel Jones there. Escapes, keeps his eyes, surveying the end zone there, and he finds James who uncovers and puts the ball right on it. Hey, a boy. Hey, bro. What I tell you, man? I want to see that backflip. Hell yeah. <laughs> Execution, smart, it's good. Just execute, we'll be good. Yep. Okay, well done. Tight end slide, good job. Way to be physical, okay? We'll keep on mixing and matching. Let's keep moving these guys off the line of scrimmage. Finish your play. So it's first and 10 at the 31. I said, old fashioned eye with Barkley the tailback. Play fake. Jones back to throw. Zips one down the left sideline. A wheel route for Bellinger. Makes the catch at the 10 and shoulder down at the six yard line. Bellinger was lined up as the fullback in that old-fashioned eye. Gain of 24. Calls out the signals. Takes the snap. He's back to throw. Fires it right. Completes it for the goal line for Hodgins. Is he in? Touchdown, Giants. Isaiah Hodgins. For his fourth touchdown catch of the season. Second for Jones today. And the Giants now lead it 13-3 with the extra point pending. Big man. Big man. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Hey, Execution all the way through. Good on the fake. Good details. Out a boy. Out a boy. Foles in a shotgun. Bunch formation right. Three step drop. Foles fires it. Intercepted by Landon Collins down the left sideline. Collins to the 20. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Giants. Landon Collins with the pick six. And MetLife Stadium goes nuts. 54 yards. Boy, what a read and a break on the football there. You can see his teammates are just loving what he did there. Big time. Big time players make big plays. Hey, 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 we gotta go back. 
Take care of the fundamentals, got me? We'll have more chances. Just keep taking care of the fundamentals. Play good football right now. Keep it up. Barkley to his right. Now Barkley goes to his left. Jones takes the snap. He's going to keep it and run around the left side. He's got a lead block. Jones to the 15. Jones to the 10. Jones to the 5. Shoulder. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown, Daniel Jones. 18 yards. Takes the snap. Play fake to Barkley. Jones rolls to his left. Gets a block from Thomas. He's to the 5. Jones races in. Touchdown, Giants. Second rushing touchdown for Daniel Jones. And let the party begin at MetLife Stadium. And Daniel Jones to an ovation at MetLife Stadium. A standing ovation for the Giants quarterback. His day is done and he has led the Giants to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. <laughs> Where the ball, where the ball? He's running like me out there. Huh? Running like me out there. That's what I'm saying, bro. I love you, bro. Love you, bro. Keep balling. He deserves this. You deserve a lot of hard work you do. Time and effort, man. Fight the pain. I love you, bro. Let's get out. Let's go. Giants are going to go to the postseason. Final seconds. Kick off. Brian Dable pumping his fist to the crowd. There it is. The final score, the Giants 38, the Colts 10, and the Giants will make it to the postseason as the sixth seed. Yeah! Let's go! Hey, were you going to win like that? I'm speechless. Playoffs, baby, let's go! That's all that matters. That's all that matters. We in there. Let's go! Good shit, fellas. Okay? Mm -hmm. Took that next step. I'm so fing proud of you, all of you. Okay? Chokes me up. It's a great feeling, and I congratulate all of you. I told you we were right there on that step, and you guys took it about as complete team of game we could play. You've worked your ass off to get to this spot. There's always room for more. I like our team. I think we're making progress at the right time. Enjoy it tonight. All right? Enjoy it. Coaches, staff, players. Everybody's involved in this. Everybody. It's not a one-man show. That quarterback played good. Mm. Mm. You want to say anything, Daniel? Speed. 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 Thank you. Appreciate everybody. Bring it up. Bring it up. See everybody on Wednesday. Giants on three. One, two, three. All right, Daniel's right. See you Wednesday. Yeah! Carl, the Giants certainly seized the moment, you know, from whether it was Lawrence Taylor ringing the bell, the fans were into it, and certainly it was a festive day But because the team did what they needed to do and not make it a heart-wrenching game. Yeah, and that was the beautiful part about it. The, the collective of fans, players, and execution led to just a beautiful day to celebrate. We're going to take a time out when we come back on the show head-to-head -head with Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Chop. We're back here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Chop. It's the Giants in Philadelphia to wrap up the regular season. Time for this week's edition of Head to Head with Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara. Okay, so let's go head-to-head -head for the Giants and the Eagles this weekend. Sean up first. We like this matchup. Ben Bredesen along the offensive line against Javon Hargrave, a terrific pass rusher for the Eagles. Now, Bredesen missed time because of a knee injury. He'll be making his fourth consecutive appearance after coming back. In his two years with the Giants, 18 appearances, only allowed two sacks. This will be a test, though, against Hargrave, who is fourth among NFL defensive tackles with 11 sacks. He is a force that will be recognized with yeah he's a very good player you know he's got the strength and he's got speed and quickness so um, you know he's a guy that you obviously uh, you know you take into account and, and you know you do your research on um, like you said he's he's had a great year this year and uh, I think he's a, a good player for him 
I've been really impressed with Ben Bredesen. He continues to improve all season long, and you mentioned the time that he missed his injury. It's never easy when you have a knee injury as an offensive lineman, it's certainly as a guard, because change of direction limits you now. So he has been splitting some time with Nick Gates. I think it's been keeping both of them fresh, and I think it's really helped uh, Bredesen. I think when you look at, at, at for Bredesen, his run blocking has been on the, on the rise. He, he's been ascending with that. The one thing that he's been trying to clean up is just passing off some of the twists and some of the pass for You mentioned the 11 sacks. For an interior defensive lineman, those are Aaron Donald-like stats. And Javon Hargrave has been doing a great job with his power, with his leverage. You will see him line up on third down, second down passing situations, Paul. He like, likes to line up really wide on these guards. So what that does is that really stresses their pass set. They have to all of a sudden kind of take a deeper set or a wider set, which opens them up for the inside move. And that's where a lot of his sacks come from. He threatens the outside shoulder, but then kind of pries the guard open with his inside hand like you're prying open a beer can. And Javon, does he, he's got great leverage. He's low to the ground. He's got great leg drive. His legs never stop, Paul. That's a lot like you when you're out doing your walks, all right? Just constant movement right there. But this, this is a monumental challenge right here for the interior of this Giants O-line. Now, the Giants ran for over 200 yards last week against the Colts. Fourth time they've done it this season. Given the Eagles' ability to rush the passer, would you expect the Giants to rely more on the run? I think it's a smart move. You know, I think when you look at the fact that the Eagles lead the NFL in sacks right now, that's one of their fortes, getting after the quarterback. So you certainly don't want to leave your offensive linemen and you don't want to hang them out to dry. You don't want to leave your quarterback susceptible. So uh, I expect to see, yes, a lot more runs than passes. And if there are passes, play action pass kind of adds to, to, to the offensive lineman's advantage because you can sell the run quicker and it helps out with the pass pro. Now, remember last month when the Eagles had seven sacks against the Giants, the most the Giants have allowed this year, Hargrave was actually shut out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he didn't show up at all on the stat line, so that's uh, that's good motivation for the Giants offensive line if they could do that again. All right, who do we got for our next matchup, Paul? All right, we're looking at rookie Micah McFadden, fifth-round draft pick out of Indiana against Miles Sanders, the outstanding Philadelphia running back. Now, McFadden has seven starts this year. He's made four straight, and in his last five games, he's had 28 tackles been more productive as the season has gone on. Sanders fifth in the National Football League in rushing, career high over 1,200 yards, and he's eighth in the NFL with 11 touchdowns. He has been a force that has really driven Philadelphia's motor. So, Micah, when, when you look at a guy like Sanders who has over 1,200 yards rushing, what is the biggest challenge about trying to contain him? Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said, just keeping him contained and, and holding the edges and then making sure the guys inside are, you know, fitting the gaps and being stout. And, you know, I think for us as linebackers, it's just playing down to, downhill and not letting him get his feet going. When you look at their running game, which is very potent, one of the better ones in the league, how much will that help prepare you for what you're going to see in the postseason? Oh, it helps a lot. And, I mean, I think we learned a lot the first time we played them, just, um, you know, how they do things and, and, you know, just all their gap scheme and, and, you know, just how physical they are. I think it helps us get ready for, for the playoffs and, and what we're going to see with the, uh, the teams following. Yeah, Paul, Michael McFadden has been doing a great job for the Giants, and he's filling in as a linebacker, which is what he did in Indiana. And, and when he was coming out of college and he got drafted by the Giants, some of the things that jumped out on film was he, he loves to attack downhill. He's a great blitzer. He's a great closer. When he gets a chance to make a tackle, he rarely misses. So this is a great opportunity for him. And when you look at, at Micah McFadden and the Giants' defense against Miles Sanders, you mentioned he's fifth in the NFL in rushing right now. The Eagles have kind of gotten away from the run game. Even without Jalen Hurts in the lineup with Gardner Minshew, they had just nine rushing yards in the first half alone last week. So it'll be interesting to see what the Eagles want to do against the Giants. But Micah McFadden, one of the things you see a lot from him, I think he, he does a great job of fighting off blockers on the move, whether it's a fullback, whether it's a tight end. That's really his forte. Now, he's made a couple of, no, of big tackles this season already. He showed his great closing speed. He had a really nice tackle on Tony Pollard in Week 12 against Dallas on a toss sweep. He had a really nice tackle for a loss against Boston Scott in Week 14 when they played the Eagles earlier on. And again, it just showed his range, showed his closing ability. Those were off-the-ball plays. Paul, he showed a really nice play against the Minnesota Vikings on the ball. All right, on the ball means he was lined up as a Sam linebacker on the line of scrimmage, and he was head-to-head -head against TJ Hawkins in the tight end, beat him with a nice shot at shed. So uh, that's going to be something that I'm looking forward to watching this matchup right here. And I think for Miles Sanders, you know, he, he has shown some fumble-itis. He had it in college, and it showed up again against Dallas in a big game. So that's something to keep an eye on. As well. All right. Well, just remember something. Last time against the Giants, he had 17 carries for a career high 144 yards and two touchdowns. Well, 
That'll do it for Head to Head this week. Now let's go back to Bob. Carl, obviously Philadelphia needs this game to not only clinch the division, but wrap up the number one seed. And their running game devastated the Giants a couple weeks ago. The Giants have to be better against that running attack. Well, they do. And then when you go back and you look at uh, the tape, a lot of it were just guys either not getting off of blocks or not fitting in the gaps that they were supposed to. And it led to a, a lot of big runs. And those are things that are going to have to be cleaned up, not just for this game, but if the Giants want to have success in the postseason as well. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. Madeline Burke joins us for Over Under here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. In week two of the 2006 season, the Giants trailed the Philadelphia Eagles 24 to 7 in the fourth quarter before Eli Manning would lead a comeback surge. Manning takes the snap, throws it into the end zone for Tuma, makes the catch, touchdown, he got his feet down. And with 3.28 to go, the Giants are right back in it. And now here's Jay Feely to try a field goal to send this game to overtime. Snap, spot, kick on its way, plenty of leg, and it is good! And in overtime, Eli would march Big Blue on an 85-yard drive, culminating with this fantastic finish. Third and 11, drops back, lifts on, heaves it left for Plaxico first, who makes the catch for a touchdown! And the Giants have won in overtime, and they come on the field in ball fading! The Giants score 17 unanswered points in the fourth quarter and win it, and Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia is stunned. Plaxico Burris' touchdown catch in overtime capped off a wild Giants victory in Philadelphia. As we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Well, it's time for this week's edition of Over Under. Here's Madeline Burke. All right, time for a little Week 18 game time. I'm talking about Over Under. Madeline Burke, Sean O'Hara, and Amani Toomer. Guys, you know the rules. Giants-Eagles Sunday at MetLife Stadium. Sean, I'll start with you for this first one. Over under one and a half touchdowns combined by Isaiah Hodgins and Richie James. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on this one. They both had a touchdown catch last week, and I feel like Isaiah Hodgins has been on a little bit of a heater for that. Daniel Jones is heating up as well, so uh, I'll take the over. I, I hope that we don't need that many passing touchdowns, but I'd like to see them both get one. Well, why don't you like passing touchdowns? Those are the best kind. Definitely. Anyway, I, I go, I'm going over. I'm going over with you. I just feel like this offense Offense really starting. To, I see some command out of Daniel Jones that I haven't seen before coming down the stretch. I think he's playing some of his best football of his career. Hodgins, man, that guy comes over midseason and is just contributing. I really like what he's doing. And Richie James is. Um He's getting freaky. He's getting I like freaky. It. Well played. He's all right. I'm going to go ahead and agree. Take the over as well. Isaiah Hodgins and Richie James have both been go-to guys for Daniel Jones as he has been sending it recently. Uh, Hodgins has had a touchdown for the last five games. As you mentioned, too, he and Richie James both got in the end zone. I'm taking the over on this one as well. Um, all right. Money over under 225 passing yards allowed to the Eagles. Yeah, I'm going to go over on that. I just feel that. Their passing attack is so diverse with their tight ends and passing to the running back. And also, you know, we have an explosive receiver. I just feel like it's going to be a tall order, although we don't know who's going to be the starter. But I'm still going to go with the over. Yeah, I'm going to assume Jalen Hurts plays in this game, and I'll take the over as well with you, Imani, because I feel like this Eagles offense is so explosive. They had two passing touchdowns over 30 yards against the Giants in Week 14. Um, I think those are plays that are always there to be had. A.J. Brown is so explosive. So there's going to be a couple of big plays there. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's, you know, it doesn't mean that the Giants had a bad day if, if they throw for over 250 yards, even 300 yards, um, because I, I think that they had that, those type of playmakers, to your point, Imani, on the offensive side of the ball for the Eagles. So uh, it, it's very well within their wheelhouse. I'm going to take the over as well because I think this is a must-win game for the Eagles who are still trying to clinch that number one overall seed in the NFC and the number one spot in the NFC East. I think they've got a lot to play for. I think Jalen Hurts, if he's out there, if he's healthy, he's going to be sending it. So I'm going to take the over as well. All right, over under, Sean, 50 combined points between the Giants and Eagles. Yeah, this is an interesting one because obviously, you know, the Eagles fighting for so much position-wise and the Giants, really, it's more about confidence and momentum, but 
These teams combined for 70 points in week 14. So I'm going to take the over on this one. I think 50 points between these two teams, the way that they both have been playing offensively, I think it's very reasonable. Absolutely. I'm going to go over as well. I just think, you know, the Eagles offense is explosive. I think the Giants offense is getting sneaky good. I mean, we're getting more diverse in our running game. And, and of course, Daniel Jones is playing well. So I just, I, I, I'd, agree, I'd agree with you. We're going over. I'm taking the over as well. I think the way that both of these teams, we can see the ability to put points on the board, especially the Giants coming off their first 30-point performance of the season last week and their playoff clinching win over the Colts. So give me the over on that one. As <laughs> more backflips, well. please. More <laughs> backflips. Yes, um, all right, finally, two over under three and a half sacks by the Giants defense. Ooh, I'm going to go over. Ooh. I just feel like uh, Thibodeau is a guy that is playing like we'd expected him to play earlier in the year. I think that knee injury really slowed him down coming out of the gates, but now he's really starting to be that dominant factor. And then you got, you know, you got really good a push on the inside from Sexy Dexy. I, I think you're going to go over that. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on this as well. The Giants had four sacks in week 14. And to your point, the edge rusher is going to be crucial. The, Giant, uh, the Giants now are, are going to be playing against Jack Driscoll, the right tackle filling in for Lane Johnson. So uh, they're going to look to exploit that, no doubt. And listen, Wink Martindale, you know he's going to have a couple of wrinkles here and there. Jalen Hurts has taken quite a few sacks. Um, so you know there's going to be opportunity for one of the safeties or the corners to get a sack. I'm going to agree and take the over as well. Wink Martindale is not shy to send a blitz. And as you've seen, Jalen Hurts has been sacked a few times this season. Plus, to your point, Imani, we've seen Kayvon and Dexter Lawrence stepping into their own. Dex is having a career season in terms of sacks. Give me the over on this one as well as the Giants take on the Eagles Sunday in Philadelphia. Let's send it back now to Bob and Carl. Carl, getting pressure on the quarterback is obviously key in this game and in every game for the Giants. They're getting it from Dexter Lawrence inside. Thibodeau is starting to find his groove. You got Ojolari back and whoever's in the football game. In today's NFL, if you can't pressure the quarterback, you can't win. No, you really can't because then you're playing seven on seven. And when a quarterback has plenty of time to survey uh, the field, he's going to find the open receiver. And the Giants are going to have to get after the quarterback to have a chance to win in Philadelphia. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll head to the coaches tape with Carl Banks here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Eagles in Philadelphia on Sunday. Time for strategy with Carl Banks. And Carl, as we go to the tape, Philadelphia ran the ball all over the Giants in their first meeting, and their running attack is one of the best in the NFL. It is one of the best in the NFL, Bob, and what I want to do is just show you where the Giants can be a lot better in not accommodating this awesome rushing attack. So if we stop it here, we've got a player on this side, a player on this side. Looks like they should be able to stop it here in the hole. you got a player who's going to be free here, but as it plays out, you get... A player who's taken on the block here, he's got to get over the top. Or you're going to have to take this on with the other shoulder and force the ball back in to the rest of your teammates. But as it stands, you block yourself, and they're off and running. Yeah, and, and Miles Sanders really hurt the Giants in that game. We're going to take a look at another Sanders run, and again, them able to execute it. Yeah, it's about run fits, Bob. And just understanding the fits here, so you've got... A guy pushed back here, so the edge is set, right? Now, you've got a guy who's got to keep pressing here, and you got a guy who has to keep pressing there, and you've got a free runner. So let's just take a look how this goes. So I'll freeze it here. You've got a free runner who can make the play here, but the indecisiveness of the other two players here allows that to go through, and your free runner cannot make the tackle. So run fits are everything on this. Now, Miles Sanders has a style, mm -hmm. and Boston Scott is a guy that has definitely hurt the Giants over the years. Different style runner, but an effective runner. Yeah, it's the same guys blocking for it. So, again, here it is. Run fit here. Guy on the ground here. This looks like it's going to go somewhere, right? So what you have to do is get off of blocks or keep pushing and keep pushing here so that this gets clogged up and you have a free guy to the ball. So again, you just can't accommodate what they do well. You've got to provide some resistance. Yeah, it's almost like the inside backers on that last play basically ran themselves out of the play Correct. before the point in time. And just understanding, here it is again, Bob. Let me just take this back. This is picture perfect 
for an inside linebacker. He's got a clear lane there, clear lane there. He's got three clear lanes to run. Now he's just got to make a decision. Go get it because once he pulls off, you can see the back just cuts back. And he's running. So you've got to be aggressive and you've got to press holes. Almost allowed himself to be blocked. Correct. On the other side, Philadelphia can really get after the quarterback and they force quarterbacks into making bad decisions. Right. And so the back, the end result of this play is an interception. But I just want to show up front where you have to provide some resistance and protect your quarterback. Again, the inner three, there's no one that, that tackles a guy coming right over the center. And this is an area that the Giants will continue to get attention. But you've got – there's no threat of a blitz here. So you've got two guys here to block one or to decide which one is going to block them. And they decided not – neither one would block. And then the end result of this play, quarterback is running for his life, receiver falls down, and there's an interception. So the end result of interceptions, the beginning of that or the making of that interception normally comes off of the Philadelphia awesome front four. Here it is again, inside game, outside rush, quarterback's running, throws the ball, interception. Those are the things that the Giants are going to have to be sound against on Sunday if they want to knock off the Philadelphia Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. Absolutely. All right, that's a look at strategy with Carl Banks. It's brought to you by PSE&G, providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. We'll take a timeout when we come back in the program. Above the numbers here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Michael Strahan with that pick six to wrap up the 1999 season against former Eagles head coach and now Jaguars head coach Doug Peterson. As we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop, it's time for Above the Numbers. All right, so now it's time to go above the numbers for the Giants and the Eagles coming up this Sunday. Imani, who is up first? We got Matt Breida, running back, number 31. He is a guy that is a good off-speed pitch for Saquon Barkley. You can't always go with Saquon. You got You need somebody to level out the running attack. The fact that Matt Breida is starting to really come along late in the season, freshening up Saquon for this playoff run, this is a guy that we need to get the ball to more, more opportunities for him. This is a guy that has to play well, especially because we don't know how many snaps Saquon is going to get because we have the playoff game coming up right afterwards. And this is a guy that if he can impact the game, it will really help the Giants win. Kind of interesting is that he's touched the ball with either a carry or a catch in all 16 of the Giants games. Now, he's had five 100-yard rushing games during his career. All of them came during his first three years in the NFL when he was with San Francisco. And let's not forget, Philadelphia's 18th in the NFL, giving up 120 yards a game on the ground, and the Giants ran for 123, including a Jones touchdown when they played them in December. All right, my guy is Landon Collins. And oh, why not? Coming off the second pick six of his career this past weekend, went for 52 yards against the Colts. Now, he's played 55% of his snaps in that game, the most he has played since coming back to the Giants in October. Remember, he was on the practice squad for a while. In his eight NFL seasons, he's played more games against Philadelphia than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Remember, he spent three years in Washington, Absolutely. so he knows the NFC East. In those 12 games against the Eagles, 61 tackles, nine tackles for a loss, and three interceptions. I say Collins comes up really big above the numbers this week. I really like your pick because I think the Eagles are going to try to stick to the ground game, control the game, and the fact that he is such a good tackler, sure tackler, smart player, understands concepts. This is a guy who definitely has to play above the numbers. Yeah, that would be big time for the Giants. Okay, who's below the numbers, Amani? Oh, man. Below the numbers, Dallas Goddard. This tight end is scary good. Very athletic, rangy. He's able to run with the ball after the catch. 
this is one of the key players, aside from you know the wide receiver and the running back, this is a guy that we need to try and limit his catches, limit his impact, so that the Giants can focus on other areas to try and stop on the defense side of the ball. Yeah, you see, missed five weeks due to injury. That's because he had a bum shoulder. This will be his third consecutive game back. He did not play against the Giants back in December. Uh, in eight career games against Big Blue, he has zero touchdown catches. And oh, one other item, he leads all NFL tight ends who have qualified with a 13.4 yard per catch average. He gets downfield and he is dangerous. That will do it for Above the Numbers this week. Now let's go back to Bob. Carl, obviously the Giants didn't see Dallas Goddard in the first meeting, although the Philadelphia tight ends were involved. And whether it's Goddard or when they used to have Zach Ertz, sure. that's always been a staple of Philadelphia's offense. Yeah, they have so many weapons, but no matter what, that tight end has always impacted every opponent that they play because they can spread the field and they have a tight end who can just be devastating when they need him. When we come back on the program, Coach Dable rejoins us to preview the Giants and Eagles here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. On Sunday, the Giants take on the Eagles in Philadelphia. And Coach, you played them a couple weeks ago. They were able to run the football against you pretty effectively. How important is it for your team in this last game to not let that happen? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't just running the ball. It was pretty much everything that they controlled. Um, so, you know, that was a game that, that, you know, we didn't play very well. They played very well, and the outcome was what the outcome was. So we're going to have to really do a good job in all three phases, uh, whether it's a run game, a kicking game, or on offense to, to put a better performance out than we did the last time we played them. And when you look at that, Coach, and you, in hindsight, you can say, well, we could have we could have done something, things better, just like run fits, right? Guys sure. that should be in run fits would make a 30-yard run less. That's right. Right, or even make it at the line of scrimmage. But there are a lot of those situations, even in the passing game, um, that if you could take it, you could have those plays back and redo them, the end result could be a little different or a little more challenging for a team like the Eagles. Yeah, no, you. I mean, look, just simple thing is making a tackle or, you know, completing a ball where you have an open player and, the, you know, whether you get pressure, you know, which they, you know, they got some pressure on us in the passing game. But again, the game became so out of hand that they played it exactly the way they needed to play it and really beat us in every area. They have an opportunity to not only clinch the division, but have the number one overall seed. Um, I would think because just because it's a division game, forget about that stuff, that you want to go out and put your best foot forward and try to win the game. Yeah, every game you play, uh, you want to try to win. So we're going to need a good week of preparation here and, and go out there and have a good week of practice and then you know, take the bus ride down there and, you know, play well on Sunday. All right, so as of this taping of the program, you know, you're going to decide, as you said to the media on Monday, we're going to see how it goes during the course of the week and make sure that, you know, if guys are healthy or not. But the one thing that people don't really realize is you only have 46 active players on yeah. game day. It's a 53-man roster. There's 46 out. You can't rest everybody. That's right. <laughs> so yeah. people are going to have to play in this football game that you're going to need in the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's just, you know, that's the nature of the NFL. So, look, we're um, grateful for the position that we're in. We need to have a good week of, of practice and go out there and, and, you know, try to play a good game on Sunday. And it's also an evaluation process, right, because as you get into that postseason, Guys are getting valuable reps, getting valuable snaps, and you never know who's going to get hurt in the next game, and someone might be playing a full load for you. Yeah, no doubt. And you can see, you know, our roster the past few weeks, we've had a lot of guys that have played in some spots that maybe they didn't play earlier in the year. And, um, you know, that's – you create value for yourself as a player when you can do that. Um, so if a guy is just playing on special teams, but then he can come in and play corner for you, you become a val very valuable piece of the team. Coach, we appreciate a couple minutes as always. We look forward to doing it again next week because it'll be the postseason and the week after that and so on and so forth. Thanks, right. Coach. Thanks, guys. That's the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. This week's game is presented by Alltech Lansing, an official audio speaker of the New York football Giants. Well, the Giants will be taking on the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday at Lincoln Financial Field, the final regular season game of the 2022 season, and it is off for the playoffs. After the game, make sure you check out Giants post game. It's presented by NFL 
all day. So for Carl Banks, Coach Dable, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop.